So now you have the tools to get started on your own spatial C data analysis. This tutorial will be for those trying to do their own spatial seek analysis, whether it is your own data or already published data. I am going to be using the 10x Visium platform. It's one of the more widely available platforms, even if it may not be the technology with the highest resolution. Hopefully 10x or someone else will keep pushing the technology forward. But anyways, just a really quick introduction into what spatial seek is. Basically, instead of single cell sequencing, where each droplet or cell gets tagged with a unique barcode, in spatial seek, you take a slice of tissue, put it on this special chip. Each dot at each coordinate gets its own unique barcode. So the RNA taken from that location can be mapped back to where it belonged on your tissue slice. So I'm going to be using already available data for this tutorial. If you go to the 10x spatial transcriptomics website, there's actually a view all spatial transcriptomics publications. And if we go there, you see there's 104 different publications that have cited Visium. I'm just going to scroll down and find one that I like. So I think I'm just going to pick this long data set. It should be pretty straightforward and it was published in Nature. So hopefully it's of high quality. So if we go to the publication, go to the data availability section, we can bring up the geo accession number and open that up. And we don't want the raw data. Data set you're interested in only has the raw data. You'll have to download that and run the 10x Space Ranger software on it. This one looks like it has the Space Ranger output already. So I'll just download this. And I'm just going to unzip it. And it looks like there was two different samples. I'm just going to work with one sample for now. So if we look in that folder, you see we have the files we actually need to open this up in ScanP. We have the counts matrix. And then if we look in spatial, so this has the tissue images, and then it'll also have the coordinates. If we head the tissue positions, you see we just have a barcode. And then there's a spot position, and then there's also an image position. So I've just imported my modules, which are my typical modules that I use for single cell sequencing. And we're going to use the read Visium function from ScanP. And we're going to point at that directory that the sample was in to read in the A data. And then we need to run var names make unique. So we start off with around 1200 cells and 36,000 genes. So if you don't have Visium, I wanted to show you here. The images are actually saved in the unstructured data under this path of dictionaries under dictionaries. So you could save your own image, even if it isn't Visium, into an A data object. So you could read in the matrix as a regular A data object. And you can load your images in NumPy array with multiple different modules available in Python. And then under the obsm spatial dictionary we have an array where each row corresponds to the coordinates of that barcode so these will be filtered with your objects but this will stay the same so if we look at the shape of this it should correspond to the number of positions and then i'm just going to add a dummy variable to the obs because if we look at obs right now we only have these values so I'm going to add a column of just A's so that we can look at where the positions were mapped onto the tissue. So each blue dot corresponds to one of those 1200 positions. And after we do the pre-processing, we can look to see which ones got removed. And the pre-processing is very similar to regular single cell pre-processing. So I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So we count the mitochondrial reads and then do the QC metric calculations. So I like to look at the observation data frame after this because you need to check that your percent count mitochondrial isn't all zero. Because if you have mouse, this might not be capital MT, it might be lowercase MT or capital M lowercase T. Just after you run this, make sure that you actually have values and then let's just plot some of these metrics again not too much different from regular single cell sequencing 
However, with Visium, usually you get higher number of counts and a higher number of genes because at each point there are multiple cells and you're sequencing a lower number of cells overall and the technology is just a little different than droplet. So we want to filter the outliers here. I don't have a good picture of the lower end of the total counts, so I'm just going to plot down low. You see that we can just kind of filter out all this that's below 1000 and then for the upper end i just picked around this area because that's when it starts to really tail off and you almost get this bimodal distribution so 30 35000 somewhere in here probably a good spot so interestingly this data set actually didn't have as many genes per position as i'm used to in visium data doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad data set but if you were to look at the data set that they use in the ScanP tutorial, for example, you see that the gene counts, you know, the median or mean is somewhere around 6,000. And for a typical single cell, you would get something like this. But anyway, I guess that's one of the benefits to Visium. But again, you have that lower cell resolution. It's not true single cell sequencing anymore. So we filtered at 1,000 and 35,000. And then let's look at the mitochondrial counts and we'll just do 20% uh, or 15%, which is typical. I'll just do 20. And then we'll filter the genes that aren't in at least three cells. And so we filtered out about 100 positions and we're down to 18,000 genes. So if we plot this, let me actually bump it up so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So here again was before filtering and then after filtering. So it looks like we filtered a lot of the cells in this area here, maybe a few up here and a few up here, which may correspond to dead cells or some sort of area that had some sequencing artifact, etc. But we'll go ahead and normalize each point to the same number of counts, convert to log, and then find the highly variable genes just like in typical single cell data analysis. And then we'll calculate the PCA, we'll find the neighbors, plot the UMAP, and then do clustering with Leyden. So all of this is identical to what we do in single cell sequencing. And then here, if we plot the UMAP, and we're just going to show some of these QC metrics again, and the clusters, we do see that there's big differences in total counts and the number of genes by the cell type. But let's go ahead and plot on top of the spatial image now with plot spatial. We see again that it looks like a lot of these higher counts and higher number of genes are localized along the edge. Uh, let's see how the laden or the clusters look. So it says they correspond a lot to this cluster eight. Uh, to be honest, this kind of would worry me a little bit them being on the edge. It's possible that I may have wanted to reduce the threshold for filtering by the number of counts, and maybe we would have lost some of these positions on the outer edge. Just be aware that that may be some sort of artifact. And then we can calculate the marker genes, just like in single cell sequencing. I know this is all, looks like a lot, but I'll put this on my GitHub so you can just copy it, and then we'll convert that into a data frame. So we have our markers data frame, our marker genes for each cluster. Let's look at cluster two, for example, and then let's just take the top marker from cluster two, and you can do this with any gene, but I just wanted to pick that one, and we can plot it onto the spatially resolved image. And we see that, of course, it corresponds to where we see these, these green points, which came from cluster two. And so that's the basic loading in the data and pre-processing and where to get the data. So now you have the tools to get started on your own spatial seek data analysis. I'm going to extend this series a little bit because we really didn't cover any complex spatial analysis here. In a future video, I'll do some more advanced analyses like demultiplexing. So can we take an individual point and actually demultiplex that into its component cells? And then also I want to cover the package SquidPy, which is all about spatial analyses, and they have a bunch of cool little tools you can use. So I'll do those in two upcoming spatial videos as well.